Let us, if you haven't opened it yet, open up Revit. And within there, I'm actually just going to open the session three starting point, the same one we had last time. It's not really very critical. In fact, if you want to, you can just create a new file. Because for what we're doing today, we're just kind of playing around with some different things. In fact, let me do that. I'll just open a new one instead. I'll just make it really easy. So don't worry if you don't have a starting point file. I'll just say new. Okay, and we're looking at a plain old blank Revit model. It has level one, level two, four elevations defined, and it's kind of the drawing area right here. Okay. And what we want to start with is really just continuing with the whole notion of curtain walls, but giving you a little more interesting um, flexibility in terms of like a uh, how you work with these things. So we'll look at curtain walls again and talk a little bit more about how you edit and sort of change and customize them. Okay, and then we're going to move into floors, and then finally on to like uh, roofs. So let's start with curtain walls. The big idea behind curtain walls is that any wall can become a curtain wall, and the curtain walls were just a special type. There are two different ways of creating curtain walls. There's a way where we can sort of define the entire pattern of the curtain wall just in the type properties so we can set up what the vertical spacing is, what the horizontal spacing is, and put the mullions in there and automatically generate the pattern. Or you can go through and do it completely custom. Okay? And it's really, those are just starting points in terms of what you can do with a curtain wall. Either one of those are valid starting points. It just really depends where you want to end up. If you have a very regular pattern, or a fairly regular pattern, you may want to start as a pattern-based one to get a lot of things laid out for you and then customize it. Or if you're just completely custom and have no pattern at all, you might want a very artistic pattern that would be hard to describe mathematically. You might want to go through and just create it from scratch. But it doesn't really matter. Either way, you're just sort of coming towards the middle. So we want to show you a little bit more about how you can edit the curtain walls to really make what you want to have happen. Okay, let's go over here. You know, part of it's just adding grids and taking away grids, but let's go ahead and just start put together a basic curtain wall and show you what it looks like, and we can go from there. I'm going to start by just creating a little wall. I'll make a nice little just a rectangular wall assembly, something like that. Again, there's nothing particular about that in terms of size. Currently, it's 20 feet high. I might want to change the type properties on that. I'll leave it 20 feet because I actually want to have a little height difference. Okay. I'll go to 3D, take a look at it. And if I want to make one of those a curtain wall, again, I can just select the wall and change it from the generic type to one of the curtain wall types. Again, curtain wall one being completely blank sheet of glass where we would start from scratch. These other two being predefined curtain walls. Exterior glazing is divided into grids but doesn't have mullions. Storefront is divided into grids and has mullions. So both those are in there already. And I'm going to go to just exterior glazing as a pattern. Okay, so what I am looking at now, let me shade that. That always makes it a little bit easier for me to tell what's going on. Is I'm looking at a lot of very patterned pieces of glass. So the glass is broken up into a specific grid pattern. And if you want to, you can change that pattern. It's really just a type property. So I can keep the existing type, which has a pattern of vertical grids every 6 feet and horizontal grids every 12 feet. I can just change these numbers and change that pattern for the name exterior glazing. Or if I want to have two different patterns and have them both available, I can duplicate. Sort of that very common operation where I'll duplicate this, and I'll call it exterior glazing. I'll call it the tight pattern. Again, just duplicating it. That's just a name. And then I can say, oh, that's going to be four feet wide by eight feet tall. Hmm. Still no mullions to it yet. So I'll say, OK. And I can change between those patterns just by coming up to the type selector and choosing exterior glazing or exterior glazing type pattern. So just kind of very freely feel. It's just a, a type. You can change between those things. Now, once you're looking at this pattern, you can go ahead and add to it or subtract to it and customize it a little bit. For example, let me zoom on in a little bit. Let me add some more grid patterns or grid lines to it. Oh, these are like four by eight right now. Let's say I wanted to have one section where they were only two feet wide as opposed to four feet wide. But not everyone, just one of them in there. What I can do is choose under the home ribbon or the home tab of the ribbon, choose curtain grid. 
And within that tool, I can choose if I want to affect all the, like a line that cuts across all the segments, you know, only one segment or everything except the one that's picked. And let me show you what the effect is. Okay, this is all. All will get across, you know, the entire wall. Whereas one segment, let me try that instead, that's only going to get that one piece of glass. It's not going to get both pieces of glass. Okay, so you just decide which way you want it to be. Let me say I'll do that at, oh, right there. Split that up. I can add a grid going in the other direction too. Okay, and I can just start parceling this up and breaking it down just how I want to to be the pattern that I like. Now, sometimes we like to add, sometimes we like to subtract. So for example, oh, maybe I've defined a pattern and what I would like to do now is just remove that little piece of the grid right there. Okay, because I'm creating, oh, more of an artistic Mondrian kind of effect. And how I could do that is I'll go to Curtain Grid again. Actually, I, I switch notes. Okay, not go to Curtain Grid. What I'm going to do is actually select the grid. So I'm going to select that grid. I might have to tab to get the grid. Remember the whole issue of tabbing. You hover over it. Currently, it's actually grabbing the grid. But as I tab, don't hold down on the tab, tab key. Just tap the tab key. As you tap the tab key, I'm tapping Caps Lock, which is not very effective. <laughs> Okay, it's switching between panels, grids, all the grids. Let me just grab that one grid. When I choose that one grid, I get the option of adding or removing segments because I now have the modified curtain grids. So I can again choose that and say, you know, I just really want to get rid of that little piece right there. Okay, and it didn't quite get rid of it yet. But as soon as I click away, it'll take out that one piece. So just play with it. That's all I have to say about grids and stuff like that. Play with it and see if you can kind of come up with interesting patterns. And you know, if you're starting with a, we started with a pattern-based one here. We're customizing it. That's actually working out pretty good. Let me show you a variation on that theme. Okay, let's say that we go to this grid. Okay, and we want to get rid of it. Now this grid's a little bit different than that grid we just added. This grid was actually determined by the pattern. It's not a custom piece. It's a pattern grid, uh, grid piece. So what happens is, see this little guy here? He looks like a pin, like a push pin. He's locked to the pattern right now. So if I want to change that piece, move it over two inches, or take it out or something, what I have to do is unpin it. Okay, and what you're doing is saying, okay, you will no longer be part of the pattern. You're going to be a custom piece. And then I can try moving it around, or I can try deleting it by just backspacing it out. Which I take that back over here. I want it to be backspace, but maybe it isn't right there. Add or remove segments. I should be able to. I want to delete the whole thing. Nope. It wants me to add or remove the segments. That's funny. Every version's a little bit different, so pardon me as I sort of fumble sometimes. But the important thing to note there is if you have a pattern-based system, you can change it too. You don't. You, it really depends on which way you want to come towards the middle completely custom or pattern and kind of bring yourself in. But go ahead and adjust it till you get what you like. Now, once you have added and removed grids and things are looking the way you want, what you can do is as follows. Okay, add mullions. That part you got last time. Let's just add some mullions in. That's real quick. Come on over here. We're looking at this system. If we want to add the mullions because they haven't already been defined, we can choose the shape of the mullions up here in the type selector. So two by five rectangle, that's pretty big. How about one inch square? I'll go for some relatively small little mullions in here instead. Not so heavy. I can choose all the grid lines, a single segment, or along the line. So along the line would be I'll choose and just hover over one line. It'll just put a mullion right on that one line. Whereas if I say all grid lines, it'll put it on the entire wall. So again, just figure out what makes sense for you. Because sometimes we want to put mullions everywhere, sometimes we don't. We just want to have breaks in the glass. It's actually, this is sort of a old, more, an older detail, having all the mullions in there. In a lot of newer buildings, we start to see uh, just glass, where they're just glasses butted up against each other with some nice sealant in there. And we have to sort of support the structure some other way. But we're getting, we do a lot more what I'll call like blind glass, where it just seems to be floating. Okay, now mullions, grids, that part's all good. The last thing you need to sort of know about in terms of this is really these panels, because you actually have some uh, variation in terms of what you can do to the panels. 
So let's think about what those options include. Okay, the idea is panels can be solid, they can be glazed, you can make them out of different materials. If you want to put a stone panel in there, or a wooden panel in there, or a painted panel in there, whatever you want, we can change any of these panels. By default, they're all glazed, okay, but you can change them. We can also change them to different types. So as opposed to just being these fixed panels, we can make them windows that are swingable and openable. If we want to get some ventilation in there, which we tend to like to do these days, we can also change any of these panels into a door. So it's really just whichever, what you want to do. So let's take a look at that. It all starts by selecting a panel. And so this is the hard part. The hard part's just selecting the panel. After you get that, it's pretty easy. So you hover on an edge. You tab once, tab twice. Okay, now I have a single panel selected. So I can choose it. Okay, now I can make a change to that panel. So that's, it's all this tab, 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 select. You've got to get that thing down. Okay, once you've selected a panel, I can go through and say, okay, what's available here? I have glazed panels. I have solid panels. I have an empty panel. If I just want to leave a big old gap, let me make that a solid panel. Okay, not a very interesting solid panel, but it'll do. Okay, if you want to get more than one panel, and that's very often if you're creating a pattern, you want to select more than one. I can select them one at a time, but if you want to, for example, get every other one and change them, let's look at that because it's a very similar operation. What you got to do is as follows. Kind of get yourself over, select one. So tab, got it. Okay. Now, before you go very far away, let's go ahead and just drag the mouse. Don't, don't click on anything. Just drag the mouse over another panel. You might have to do a little tabbing to grab the second panel. Now, rather than clicking on this, if you control click on that, that'll add it to the selection. And that's going to be a very common thing throughout Revit, is every time you control click, you're adding things to the selection, as opposed to shift clicking, which takes things out. Now, that's exactly backwards from like Adobe products and some other systems. So watch out for that, because it's a, uh, yeah, but control click selects that one. And I can hover over this one, and I'll control click on that one. Now I've got three of them selected. Okay, and with those three selected, then I can go through and change them and say, let's make those solid panels too. Okay, so we're starting to develop a pattern here. It's, it's looking more interesting, not necessarily artistic, but it's looking more interesting. Okay, so you select panels, you can change them from glaze to solid. That part's good. Let's talk about how you can actually change the quality of the panel. So it's not just solid or glaze, but it's a, a different material or a color. Okay, and that you might recognize as being a different type. The whole idea was it glazed was a type, is it solid as a type? So if I want to make a blue solid or a white solid or a wood solid, that's just a variation on a type. Okay, and whenever I need to create a new type that's an awful lot like an existing one, my brokered record is going to go off and say that what I need to do is select the panel, look at its type properties. And then say it. You know what I'm going to tell you. Duplicate the type. Okay, and I'll call this like a solid blue. And then we are ready to go ahead and customize its properties. Now, by default, the material or the material is just showing up as default, whatever the default is for a solid panel. If I want to choose a specific material, I can click in there, open the materials dialog, and then find something. I'm going to pull down in here, and I'm going to go to the painted surfaces. It's a big old black painted panel. Yeah, let's do that. Now, I actually, I said it was going to be blue. Let me make it blue. What I'll do is I will duplicate paint, and I'll make a paint blue. And this is just a name. Then associate a color with it. Nice royal blue. Okay. This will now be painted paint blue. Say OK. And that one's available. So since I have the type paint blue, I can select another panel over here. Sometimes a lot of tabbing, that one. And that type will be in our type selector. OK. 
Okay, now, I will leave it to you to go ahead and create solid white, solid black, solid red, solid yellow, all those things, or wood, or stone, or whatever it is, because it's really all just duplicating the types and then associating the material that you want to have with that panel. Okay, so let's just pause there and reflect for a minute and see how people are feeling about that so far. If you, you know, how are, how's this whole grids, choosing panels? Are you got the whole thing of tabbing and grid? Yeah, ask. Unless, unless you wanted to spread all of those panels with the blue panel after you created your site. Is there an easy way to do that apart from just selecting the I think you can. Let's go to the type properties of the system. And I'm pretty sure in here, let me find it in here. It's a type property. There's something about the default glazed. Uh, I'm going to find it in here. Curtain panel. This is actually putting like a wall type in there. I've got uh, to find it in here. There is something about what the default, uh, actually, maybe it's a, maybe it might be even a type or uh, instance property as opposed to a type property. I always have to find this. Base. Hmm. The answer is, I swear it is, but it may have shown up in a later release. But there is, yeah, the whole idea of like, that there should be a default, mm -hmm. as opposed to like uh, changing, having to change it instantly. So let me do a little punting around and see if I can find that. But I think that, yeah, it does exist. I'm just not finding it right now. No worries. What else? Hmm. You succeeded in stumping me. That's good. <laughs> you get a prize. I'm not sure what. <laughs> we'll figure it out. So. How, there you, hey, that could work. Um, so select panels. Honestly, the biggest trouble people have with this whole thing of the sol is just tab, 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 select. You know, after that, the choice of you know, solid, glaze, you know, that tends to be pretty easy. Now, along those same lines, however, is the whole issue of doors and windows. And I think that last time, Demi did talk about the doors, but let's just sort of reinforce it one more time. And that is as follows. Putting a door into a curtain wall is really just replacing the panel with, instead of a fixed panel, it's putting a panel in that has something that swings on it. So it really is it's a panel operation. It's weird, because they show up in door schedules. You load them from the door part of the library. It's door, 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 door. But then when it's time to actually put it in there, you change a panel into a door. And actually, there's window types now, awning types and casement types. But here's how you do it. And let's talk about how it would work. Okay. If you're going to basically change a panel into a door, it's important to actually get your panel size set up to be about the size you want the door to be. Does that make sense? You got you to sort of make a panel that's the size of a door and then swap out that panel with a door. Okay, so you can take a look and see what size panels we have in here. For example, over here on this grid, about seven foot six, that, that's a little wide. This one over here, three feet wide, that's not too bad. That's a reasonable size door. This side, this panel over here on this side, let me see what's going on on the end of the building. And I'm just trying to tab and see if I can get that grid. About six feet, ah, that'd be a pretty good double door. Let me choose that one. To bring up the measurements. It's, um, so as soon as I select the grid line, it puts the temporary dimensions in there. Oh, so you yeah. Okay, so we'll choose a panel and we'll replace it with a door. In fact, I might replace that one over there. But before we can choose that panel and replace it, we have to make sure our door types are loaded. Okay, so let's find them. And here's what's goofy. They're not going to be when doors where you think they are. They're going to be by selecting it and pulling on down in this menu and seeing if the door's there. And they aren't there right now because I started with a generic one. Now. In the starting point for one and starting point for session two and three, I had actually loaded the door types already in there. So you probably already have them in there. But if anyone's starting from scratch who's watching the video, let me show you how you do that. I think you'll already have them, though. What you got to do is we go to the door tool, again, violating all proper rules because you're actually loading a curtain panel type. And you say, load a family. And then you go to the door folder which again violates your sense of propriety because you're loading a curtain panel type. And then you'll find curtain wall, double, single, and storefront. Okay, And you bring them in. And because you went to the door tool and you loaded them for the door family, you fully expect that they're going to show up under the door tool now. But they don't. Okay, They show up as curtain panel types. So do not panic about the fact that 
I keep on loading it, but it doesn't show up as a door. I keep loading it and it doesn't show up as a door. Because, again, fourth time through, you'll remember, oh, yeah, there's that stupid thing where choose the panel, change it to curtain wall double glass at the panel type, okay, and then it'll put a door in there. Okay, and there we have a door. If you're a real stickler, you might want to go through and take that mullion out so you don't trip on it as you go walking out the door. Okay, but that's all there is to it. Now, this one little operation, practice it, practice it often, because it's really, this, this one little thing, I have all these videos uploaded on like YouTube and stuff like that. This is the number one video I have ever produced is how to go through and change curtain wall panels into doors because people all over the world struggle with this thing. It's just, it seems simple enough, but not when you're at home and yeah, no one's telling you. So we'll just watch out for that. That's like one of the classic gotchas. Yes? Say again? Sure. What it is, is we choose a panel, any panel at all. Let me go, to, for example, I'll choose this panel, and I'll make that a single door. And I'll say, let's go ahead and choose under the type selector for the panels, and I'll choose single glass. Okay, and there's the door right there. Now, the interesting thing, just so you know, this is really weird, because they're doors, but they're not really doors, they show up and look like doors and floor plans. And they'll schedule like doors. There's a really weird hybrid object. And if you don't like the handle side, you can go ahead and change the flip. When you go between the side in, is it as a internal or external door? Um, let me check the look at that. I don't even think it, when I say load the family, my collection just has doors and they're just sort of at the top there. Is there internal and external in this list a little further? My list doesn't have that. Oh, in the CE110 library, I may actually separate them out. But it's, yeah, it's, it's just sort of wherever they have to be organized. But look for curtain wall, double glass, curtain wall, single glass. You just don't have those in your collection, in your library? Hmm, that's a little odd. But let's see if we can figure out what's out. So we're hanging. Are you in which version? Are you in 2010 still? You're yeah. the good there. And you go to doors. Oh, you're the metric library. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe the metric library did something weird. Try opening that. Try external doors. I'm guessing there. Can I just pull on down? That's actually very, go popping back up again. I think that just the metric library is organized a little bit differently. Try um, curtain wall panels. Try that. Hmm. If you happen to have the metric library loaded, of course it's organized a little bit differently. In fact, it has a lot more interesting objects there, so I might want to go for that one instead. But uh, let's see if we can figure out what the difference is between those two. Okay, that's it for curtain walls. I don't want to belabor curtain walls, but they're fun. People like to play with them architecturally. Yeah, just know what's going on in terms of those. Okay. What I want to talk about next is, this is creating different curtain wall panel types, changing the doors, resizing, okay.